Hello there. We're going to wrap up the discrete probability distributions today. And as you can see, I've stolen a little bit from another book because I think it's a little bit better than ours. Here we roll. More discrete probability distributions, in particular, the geometric one and the Poisson. And before I get too far along in this, I'm going to pick up And if I can find it, there it is. Okay, check. Yep. We're in good shape. All right, geometric and Poisson distributions. We're going to find probabilities using both, and they're not too hard. Once you've got a couple of those initial ones done with binomial, this will seem very familiar. Poisson's a little bit different. Geometric is a little bit different. The basic idea is the same. You go to the same place in your calculator and just pick out a different one and put in the parameters that apply. First, the geometric one. It's a little bit easier than the other one, at least because first, it's a discrete one. You come in chunks, so to speak. Has following conditions. You keep doing something until you get a success. That's a little bit different from the other ones where you just do for a, a certain number of times and then you wonder how many success you get. In this case, I don't want to say failure exactly, but it, it does apply sort of. So you have a number of failures and as soon as you get a success, you stop. It's sort of like looking in different rooms for your keys. You stop looking when you find the keys. It's sort of like that. Each trial is independent of each other. That should sound familiar. The probability of success, P, which is the letter we usually use, the probability doesn't change from a trial to a trial. And the random variable, notice that this is a small x, represents the, n the number of the trial. In other words, where you stopped when you got the first success. How many did you have to try? And here's a picture of what the probability looks like. But, even though that's not too bad actually, but still, what this amounts to down here is, if we look at this one, let's see, where's my pen? There. Okay. If you look down here, if you look at this part first, remember, this is when we got the first success. So x minus 1 were failures. And then you had the success. So this is an old friend, really. And of course, Q represents the probability of a failure. All familiar territory, I hope. So here's an example to give you a shot. So we found that the failure rate was 43%. So let's see. Four smartphones are made by the manufacturer. Selected a random, that all sounds good. Find the probability that the fourth smartphone is the one to have a failure. So, remember first that since this is the geometric, We're going to go to second bars or second distribution. And we're going to fill in the blanks. We're going to give it the probability for each one. And we're going to give it the x, which in this case is 4. And the failure rate is 0 0.43. So this is how it goes. And although you can do it, like this, 
you might find it easier. Where am I? There we go. Might find it easier to do this. All you have to do is put that P in first, the probability of what you're interested in, and put the X or the where in the list you're interested. And just let the calculator do the rest. You can do this if you want to, but since we're using the calculator for a bunch of other ones, might as well just go ahead and use geometric PDF. Why PDF? Because you're interested in, where is my pen? It keeps disappearing. You're interested in exactly four. It hit, hits the first first failure on the fourth one. So we had failure rate 0.43 and we're interested in the fourth one being the first failure. So you get a good one, a good one, a good one, and the next one fails. And the probability of that is about a percent. Pretty easy. Remember, the parameters are very similar and the 4 or the X represents how far or how many times you have to do it until you get a success. And there's what it looks like in the calculator. Now, the Poisson distribution. By the way, I'm going to do a second video with some more examples, so relax. This is sort of an introductory sample. This is the Poisson distribution, another discrete one. So we're talking about individual pieces or ch chunks of things. And it follows these conditions. You start counting the number of times something happens in an interval. And where's my pen? There we go. This is the key right here. We're talking about intervals. And the interval can be a time period, an area, sort of like within a seven acre field, for example, or a volume. Second, the probability is the same for every interval as opposed to every every experiment or every trial. The number of occurrences in one interval, let's move this out of the way, is independent of the other ones. So each interval is independent of all the other ones. Okay, where am I? Here we go. More conditions. If you want the probability of exactly X occurrences, and you know that's going to be a PDF. Poisson PDF. The mu here is the average number of times in that interval or area or time period. This is the same as you have right there. And this X is the same as you have up here. E you can find on your calculator. You don't even need to type that in. And mu is the mean number of occurrences. I'll give you a hint, just in case you should take some other statistics at some point, and you're looking at the Poisson distribution. This mu, in some listings, or some books, is listed as, uh, see, is that gamma? Lambda, lambda. But for this, 
for this purpose for us we're going to just use mute which is a little bit simpler right okay here's a simple example mean number of accidents per month at a certain intersection the key right here is a mean number and per month an interval of time so that means Poisson distribution and we want the we have the three here is the main so mu is three and we want the probability that we end up with four accidents this month so x equals four so here's our setup it's on PDF put in the four for the average oops four for the X three for the average of course you can do it that way too but you still get 0 0.168 Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Someone made a mistake. That's one thing about being live like this, or semi-live. I was wondering whether these should be separate. Well, here you can see it down here. The average comes first, and the x value you're interested in comes second, just like in binomial PDF. In geometric PDF, the X comes last. One more, another Poisson, because you can see up here, average number that suggests a Poisson. Also, the fact that it's per acre. And you want the probability of seven rabbits if the average is 3.6. So you want exactly seven rabbits. So let's put on PDF. The average is 3.6. We want the probability that we'll actually find seven in that field. This time they got it right. And there's our probability, 4% roughly. And that's it for now. See you next time. Bye.